about uh, the new federal theater workshops, and they're called training workshops. Uh, at the beginning, and I wrote it down, at the beginning, early workshops in acting, playwriting, dance were all multicultural. Carla Pines ran the Hispanic Theater Workshop. Moish Yeshua and Stanley Breckner ran the American Jewish Theater Workshop. Dick Anthony Williams ran the Black Theater Workshop. Lawrence Holder ran the Playwriting Workshop. These workshops was funded by Henry Street Settlement, National Endowment for the Arts Expansion Program. Expansion Program was really uh, Van Tau Whitfield, who had inculcated himself into the fabric of the National Endowment for the Arts and supported African American, Hispanic, and uh, multi ethnic theater around America. Okay. The workshops was later funded by Vinette Carroll at something called the Ghetto Arts Program of the New York State Council on the Arts. In the 90s, we added a teen theater workshop funded by Trinity Church, Coca-Cola Foundation. Another workshop in the Bronx at Christ Church taught by Sloan Robinson and Chuck Turner, who just appeared as the understudy for James Earl Jones on Broadway in the Gin Game, by the way. And we have uh, Petronia Paley, who was also in the Gen Game on Broadway, and I don't know why I did not know you were going on. <laughs> Everybody wanted to know, what, she's been on already? <laughs> yes, yeah, Cecily Tyson's down in D.C. She can't be doing the show. <laughs> so Petronia's got to go on, okay? Uh, the teen workshop was picked up by something called the Summer YEPT Training Program, where these teens were paid like $37 a week, and we administered that program. Helen Cash, uh, the late Helen Cash, awarded uh, a grant to New Federal Theater because uh, Helen was sort of like, I don't know if everybody remembers, sort of like in the vanguard of funders at the New York State Council on the Arts. She would go out into the field and look at the way things were and if they were not going well, because she really did not like the way New Federal, you know, I just put it out there, New Federal Theaters uh, 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 felt, uh, well, she felt, Woody, Pat's doing too much. She can't coordinate the workshops, so I'm going to give you money to hire a coordinator. And so here's that coordinator, <laughs> uh, Janie Washington. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Janie Washington. I'm the workshop coordinator here at New Federal Theater. Um, I've been the workshop coordinator for about five or six years. And over that time, we have trained more than 300 students. And Although we are local, most of us, uh, some students have come as far as D.C., Connecticut, and New Jersey. Also, these students have gone on to create workshops for themselves, develop theater companies, and uh, appear in commercials, Beethoven. <laughs> uh, yet, so uh, that's some of the stuff with our, our students. But what I am so humbled by is the caliber of instructors that we have teaching here. Uh, lo and behold, I think there's only like two African American theater companies that are providing training for students and NEC and New Federal Theater. But back again to our instructors, the caliber of instructors we have teaching here. Uh, they have appeared on Broadway, in films, television. They teach at major institutions. Uh, if I could just out those people at the moment. Uh, Rosalind Coleman. 
Cassandra Metley, Lawrence Holder, Petronia Payton, Michael Dinwiddie, Arthur French. Now, with our class, we offer three classes. One is back to basic, which is a basic acting uh, class that teaches the fundamentals. And then we have scene study and monologues, where they analyze plays, study character. And also, with these master instructors, they pick up some other information as far as theater history, uh, theater tales, and also theater wisdom. And our last class, what we call is um, the Playwrights Lab, which focuses on theme, structure, and character, taught by some wonderful instructors. Um, now, if I can just jump a little ahead. At the end of the presentation, uh, I mean, after the end of the, uh, the year, we uh, have a presentation with actors on one night and playwrights on the other night. And these presentations may be scenes, monologues, and also works that the class created. And these, this presentation is witnessed by theater directors, agents, casting agents, and family and friends. On the second day, we have uh, the playwright class, uh, which we have uh, directors to come in and to direct 20 minutes of a student's scene. And these are also witnessed by uh, the industrial people. And I could wax on again and again about our classes, but I want to introduce a few people who will give maybe a, like a small presentation. Uh, some of the instructors, and then we'll have a few speeches from the classes. Uh, Cassandra Matthew, could you? We're on this bar now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can come up here. I first want to say I hate the F train. <laughs> so uh, I'm one of the instructors for the Playwrights Lab. I'm happy to be teaching with my colleague. So my class is based on the class I teach at Sarah Lawrence College, which is called Developing the Dramatic Idea. And it focuses on how do you develop an idea that you have, how can you transform that from a cerebral notion into some entity that can be played by actors, communicated to an audience, and can exist in live time the theater must do. So in that regard, first of all, we talk about how a character is made. And from the playwright's perspective, a character is made by way of intention, desire, need, which I communicate to playwrights, those who have not taken acting, this is exactly what acting, what actors uh, deal with is the character's need, the character's desire. So we start from that core and we work out into having several characters on stage with needs and those needs creating events and those events building into a story. So uh, our students, many people have not written before and they begin to see that they have the ability to create moments on stage with live people moving around in three-dimensional space. And it's very exciting. And just to create one character, perhaps, or maybe several, depends on the writer's own experience and development. But over the course of a year, you see, we see the excitement of people building their stories, what they need to say, narrations that they are themselves, first of all, all excited by. And we work on revision and revision and revision 
So her story is told for the stage, which has to be immediate, it has to be compelling, it has to say so. And we learn that through the basics. So that's what we Sure. I've written mine down. So, yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't want to forget anything. So, I recall that my first paid acting job was for a new federal production when I was in college. I bet you don't even remember this. Yes, I do. Remember. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, back then, I was in equity. And I shared the role with two other actresses. And we were paid in subway tokens. <laughs> if you remember subway tokens, that's how long ago it was. Um, since that time, Woody King has been supportive. His support of me as an artist has been steadfast. And why wouldn't it be? Because everything he's done has been steadfast. Over 40 years of producing theater. And since 1970, this workshop that trains anyone, really, who wants to come and develop themselves as a playwright, as an actor. And I didn't even realize that you used to have dancers as well. Um, so yeah, he's been steadfast in his development of, of others. And also steadfast in his friendship with my father for over 62 years. <laughs> We went to high school together. Yeah. <laughs> now I want you to know that Woody, back then, you know, I had never been in anything. I was at Howard. I had never acted in anything. But Woody was right about me. Because since then, I've gone on to originate a role on Broadway for August Wilson and act on the big screen opposite Meryl Streep, Tom Cruise, Halle Berry. And I teach at NYU and SUNY Purchase, as well as here. But when Woody King asked me to come here and teach basic acting, I was totally nervous. <laughs> and I, complete, I complained. I said, I don't know how to teach basic acting. And the reason is because teaching basic acting is hard. <laughs> and what I didn't realize is that I had much to learn as an artist and as an instructor and as a human being. Teaching basic acting at New Federal Theater for me has not been about training people to be actors, per se. It has been about empowering them to know their own creativity as limitless and for them to experience the joy of sharing that on stage. And as I help these adults from very diverse backgrounds, they're really from all over the world. They happen to be in New York. <laughs> know their body as their instrument and their voice as power, and to develop the ability to tell stories and know the stories that lie within them are important, and to tell the stories of their classmates. I actually found my definition as an artist and as a teaching artist here at New Federal Theater, my purpose. When I first asked the students to introduce themselves to me in the first day of class, which is, you know, go around the room, introduce yourself, um, one thing that they say over and over again really stuck with me. They say it in different ways, but they, they basically say this, some of my students. They say, I say, why did you come to take this class? And they say, I came to New Federal Theater because the last time I remember having fun is in high school, in drama class. And I came here to see if I could be an actor. And it really breaks my heart that as adults, we travel so far away from our passion. And we travel so far away from having fun that these people in front of me of all ages feel that they haven't had fun since that moment. 
So my job is to help them learn to use their voice on stage, to open their hearts to other people's experiences, to know themselves as valuable, and to engage their empathy. And this skill of being able to communicate and engage your empathy is something that you will take with you wherever you go in life. Whether you become the President of the United States, it works very well for that. <laughs> it also works very well for your interactions. I've had people who've gone on to be preachers, and yes, I've had people go on to be actors who I see on the Law and Orders, and I see continue on the big screen, and I meet them in my own career. But these are skills that they can take with them for the rest of their days. The other thing that I really try to do is create artists, people, help them become more empathetic in the world. And that's why I always have them do, when we do the show at the end of the, the, the workshop, they have to do an ensemble piece. So they have to work together. And that experience of working together, and they, they create the story themselves, um, born of each other's stories. We did one that was uh, all text. Hi. Um, it was all text based on the re-election of Barack Obama. That was one of my favorites. But to express ourselves as artists is the only way we know it. That's what makes us, that's what separates us from the animals. So I really encourage you, whoever you are, to support this program. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Rob. Uh, we have two more of our instructors to, uh, to arrive. Um, Nathan George. <laughs> and Alice Feedback. <laughs> Since, since they had just arrived, tell them where the box lunches and the coffee is so they can partake and we can. Uh, uh, yeah, they're over there. <laughs> and, what, and Liz will tell you which is the turkey, which is the uh, uh, tuna. Uh, and now we will probably hear just a few words from Michael Dimwitty. <laughs> Wait for the phone to finish ringing. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. How are you? My name is Michael Dinwiddie. Um, I have to. I'll keep it as brief as I can because I've been involved with uh, New Federal Theater since 1977 when I came to New York, and I've grown up on, on uh, Lawrence Holder's plays and Woody King and all that. But I should say that uh, I am a playwright and a professor. I teach at New York University, the Gallatin School uh, of Individual Individualized Study. And um, I've been at this workshop for a number of years now, I guess about four or five years. And um, what's been remarkable to me is seeing the way that students have this chance, this opportunity to go through the development process. You find very few places now where you can have a process of learning over time, that you have a process where you start with an idea and you're able to shape it, what Cassandra was talking about earlier. So that's really important. What that means is we look at basic structure, we look at Aristotle, we look at modern writers, we look at Leos Agri, we look at um, uh, Jeffrey Sweet's work, Dramatist Toolkit. So we give students uh, tools to work. But the main tool is empowering students to work on the products they're working on. Because one of the things we're finding in the theater today is that the voices are not being heard that are just different voices. This morning I had a meeting with Teresa Iring at TCG. We had an hour and a half meeting talking about diversity and inclusion and uh, equity in theater. And so part of what's been interesting in terms of the culture is that, and we see with the Academy Awards, we see there's a kind of exclusion that happens. Can't say that it's accidental, it's, 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 it's endemic in the culture. And it means that there aren't enough places for people who have different voices to be heard. And so one of the important things about New Federal is that it's a place where voices are, we're open to whatever voices come into the room. And that is really a crucial thing to understand about New Federal Theater, its tradition, its culture, and where it comes, and it's and it's kind of its uh, its background. I, I just finished teaching a course in Abu Dhabi, where we had people every language speaking, talking, going to a theater uh, workshop in Doha in May. And what you're finding is the world needs to hear the different stories. And one of the issues we have in this country, Americans, is that we are used to a monochromatic stories over and over again, and we have to open up in a way that allows our artists to expand 
and allows our artists to express different notions of what it is to be a human being. So um, I'm also, I serve on the advisory board here. I'm a big fan of uh, New Federal Theater. I've been involved with it since I came to New York. I've worked in theater on stage here as well. And I always try to, I always make time to do the workshops here. Um, I've been very impressed. I went to National Black Theater last year. One of the students from the workshop had a production there. Um, I've seen productions of other plays from students who were, are here at the workshops. And again, the important thing is to open up the culture so that other voices can be heard. So that other people, so that we don't have experiences like we have in Hollywood where only certain actors are nominated. That we don't have only certain playwrights works represented, certain actors being presented. So to me, the New Federal has a mission that has always been part of this mission, which is to be inclusive in theater. And I just want to appeal to all of us to continue to remember that that's the mission and that's the way that we work here. And so, uh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. We'll hear from Lawrence Holder. I'm sorry for interrupting your uh, schedule. <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I put that word out, all of a sudden people started calling me up. Want to do your play, want to do this. I got two plays right now. So we can get you on the video. You need to do that. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Okay. A couple of interesting points that have been made by some of the instructors, and the one that stuck with me, which made me want to raise my hand, was the one that was talking about the lack of diversity, and uh, you've seen it being mentioned with regards to these Academy Award nominations, how black films are being overlooked, black performers are being overlooked, writers and the like. One of the interesting things about uh, being here with Woody King and the New Federal Theater is that this was the only place that allowed me to express myself. I had been denied by dramatists. What do they call them? Yeah. No, not the guild. No. The guild takes some, your money. New, <laughs> new, new, new dramatists. New dramatists says I'm not a playwright. I submitted a play called When the Chickens Came Home to Roost, <laughs> which starred Denzel Washington and Kurt Kirksey. They denied it. I sent it to Playwrights Horizons. They denied it. And I kept thinking to myself, let me go to NEC, the other black group. <laughs> I go to them, I have a play called All the Fine Young Lovers, and I've got uh, people like uh, Arthur Burkhardt and, uh, God, the girl, uh, McPherson, who's in Paris, I think. I hope she's still alive, even. But at any rate, and I see Douglas Turner Ward walking out of the building. It's just seconds before my reading's supposed to start. I said, well, I ain't got nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> the only place that recognizes diversity is Woody King Jr.'s new federal theater. All kinds of people, white people, black people, Asian people, you can bring your work to him. He will help you get it developed. Through Cassandra, through Michael, through myself, We've got a couple of other writing instructors here who have their own workshops. Mr. White, can I see a hand, please? <laughs> and who? Beasley. Oh, Beasley. Yeah, well, uh, Bill Beasley, <laughs> who writes plays every other minute. <laughs> I'm reading a play, well, I'm supposed to be reading a play of his that's uh, 20 years old, <laughs> and it's a musical. So if it took him 20 years to read it, I'm saying, well, I could take two months. <laughs> At any rate, my big point is the fact that New Federal Theater, Woody King Jr.'s New Federal Theater, which has been around since I've been around. Yeah, we started together. Since I, you know, Woody hired me to be playwriting director, I never read the play. <laughs> I'm sitting in his office writing plays. I wrote a, my Urban Decalogue, 10 short one-act plays. And I wrote them all in his office while I'm up there interviewing people to direct them to uh, one place or another, acting or, or writing. But uh, how many times do I need to say it? Woody King Jr. <laughs> from a couple of our students. Uh, Charles White. Yeah. He has created his own workshop. <laughs> Writer's Come workshop. Come on, the spot? <laughs> I have been taking the playwriting lab for six years, and no, I did not get left back. <laughs> the, re the reason I continue to take it is the energy that the instructors 
and the discipline, and every every year it keeps you writing. Every week you get different points of view, different approaches, and basically, you know, my daughter goes to Westland, and you, I'm getting college level instruction like she is at a bargain basement price. You can absolutely not beat what goes on here. And of course, I have learned to write a well-structured play. You may not like them, but they are well-structured. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are a little too wrapped up. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I know how to develop a character. I, I know what actors need to play a character. And I've learned all that here, and I, and I keep coming back. Um, a little postscript. Um, I have a son. It was in corporate America. Took Alice, just tells you what's going on in the show. Took Alice Spivak's acting class. My colleague in writing class, Bill Beasley, put him in a play, which I would not have done at the time because he was not an actor. I asked Bill, is he crazy who's him? <laughs> Subsequently, gets laid off from his corporate job, hires Roz Coleman as a coach, and got himself in the MFA program at NYU. <laughs> and it basically also, I see three people in this room absolutely critical to that. So, <laughs> ah, another coach, sorry about that. Well. Would you, Another Broadway actress who also helped in Petronio Paley, forgive me for, forgive yes, me for that. So, um, so we have two generations of my family that have been associated with the federal and have learned an immense amount, profited greatly. So, thank you. Wait, 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 wait. You got it. I went over to see his son in the play. I'm saying, that looks like her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. he was so into the character. And I, 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 I read his dad, you know, I said, Oh, Charles. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going on and on. Oh, man, this guy, this guy. Oh, yeah. You know? But that's, I guess, what Dad does do. But he was absolutely brilliant. This was Joe Turner, man. He was Seth Holland. So, oh, man. It was, it was, it was, so whatever Cassandra, uh, uh, Miss Coleman, and Petronia did, uh, he went over there and nailed it. Yeah. Now, coming back to me. <laughs> back to the old generation for one minute. I've had several of my plays read, and it's funny. When I hear the things I've written, I actually flash to, oh, yeah, Michael taught me that. Oh, yeah, that's from Lawrence. Oh, yeah, that's from Cassandra. That's from PJ. So in my, I mean, I see these instructors reflected in the things. I mean, I see, I said, oh, yeah, that's, I, I know exactly where it came from. And like I said, it's, it's all in the federal. Yeah. Thank you. Actors, uh, Beethoven. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, I started going to uh, actually my first show with Woody was the fabulous Miss Marie, and uh, from then on, I wanted to. I didn't know. I'm not from New York. I'm from California, and. You see all these wonderful people on TV, uh, Felicia Rashad or Denzel or uh, Glenn Truman, all these people that you just love, and you're like, where did they get their start? Turns out they go through New Federal Theater or Negro Ensemble Company or somewhere, but they go through Woody somehow. So I said, if you're going to learn, learn from the best. So I made it a point to come down to New Federal and take these classes. And literally, within the first six months, I booked a national commercial. I booked a summer Shakespeare thing. I booked something else, and all the way up to, it started in January and it probably went up into November, to all bookings. And it just goes to the testament of New Federal Theater and what, what the instructors can give to you. My first teacher was uh, Petronia Paley, and it was followed by Arthur French, and then it was followed by uh, Charles Turner, and then Alice as well. And I still continue with Alice, and I've had uh, Arthur as well, and Charles as well. And the reason why I wasn't working with uh, Petronia is because she was in on Broadway. <laughs> and so I've learned a tremendous amount. And even, even though I have training in uh, undergrad and graduate school, there is an element to learn from uh, master teachers, because that's what they are. And master teachers who influence you and who look like you. Because it is important to have people who look like you to tell you uh, wisely, especially as a, um, I like to think of myself as a sponge because I would like to know as much information as I can from my elders who are extremely wise and <laughs> to uh, fall down on my face and say, no, that's not it, get up and try it again. It's, it's so important. So um, 
New Federal Theater and its uh, workshops are extremely beneficial, have been to me, and will continue to be as long as it is in existence to people coming up in the ranks. I think it's, uh, 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 it, uh, from my own experience, I mean, I, I think I was blown away by all the work that I was able to get this year. And uh, I look forward to working with Woody and this company again. And um, uh, 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 so, and always so much to learn from my master teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Big Coach. We're here from another writing student, uh, Samantha. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I'm very shy, but my name is Samantha Byam. I uh, started going here about a year ago, and it truly has helped me develop my writing skills. Um, prior to NFT, I was good. Um, I write, I write uh, plays for my church, but my pastor was like, you're good, but why don't you go to a workshop to get even better? And um, it's just been a blessing to me. Writing is a passion of mine. Um, the teachers, Mr. Michael, I don't know if you remember me. Of course. Uh, Cassandra, <laughs> Lawrence, thank you so much for helping me with developing the characters, just working on the storytelling in general. Um, it really has allowed me to write these, uh, these powerful, realistic, compelling stories. I'm so shy, I'm sorry. I'm really shy. <laughs> um, just a quick story. I remember, I remember working on this, this play called The Darkest Hour, and um, Cassandra's like, well, I thought it was good to my knowledge. Cassandra's like, uh, why don't you, what happens to, to this person? What are her thoughts, and what is he going to do here, and where is he going? And it really just um, allowed me to open up to, um, sorry, let me just read. Just things that I never would have thought of on my own, she's really allowed me to open up and, and, and write um, even better stories. Um, so I'm, I'm going to sit down. But thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to Jenny, Mr. Woody, everybody here, um, the critiques I've get, that I've been um, given in class to become better, a better writer, and hopefully a better public speaker. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. If you walked in and said, I want to write plays like Tyler Perry, I'm going to uh, uproot Tyler Perry. <laughs> okay. I think that boldness, I said, wow, this, if she does it, hey, <laughs> you know. Okay, and. To what's happening in society. And I, uh, I asked Mr. Woody to read what, that play that I wrote. I'm still working on it now, but it's just a lot of hard work and a lot of determination. Um, and I, if this workshop was still going on, I know that I could create a masterpiece. It is a blessing to be in the class. The people that are in it, you build relationships, the networks, just networking in general. Um, it has allowed me to open up my mind to just different thoughts and ideas. And Produce, it's, it's allowed me to be a better producer, a better director, um, a better writer, um, and yeah, just a better storyteller. So this workshop is really, uh, you know, um, uh, catapult. Uh, uh, you cool? You cool? You know, I, huh? <laughs> just allowed me to just be the best that I can be. And thank you so much for really believing in me and empowering me to write better stories. So look out for Black Lives Matter. Thank you, uh, Cassandra. Oh, also, uh, we had another instructor just to step in, uh, Charles Turner, who was understudying James L. Jones in the Gin Game. He just walked in, Charles. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cassandra just wanted to add just a few more words. So I live on the, on the, on the Upper West Side. It's a long trip here. To repeat, I do hate the F train. But you know, I, don't, I can't remember how many years ago I was asked, would I come? 
and teach, <coughs> be part of one of the teachers of the Playwrights Workshop. So why do I teach here? I want to emphasize why I teach here. I teach at Sarah Lawrence College. There's a different, overall a different student population. And I want to talk about economics. That's the diversity that I want to talk about. Because in addition to our climate change and so on, we all know that a phrase that was coined about two years ago, the 1%, was a phrase coined in Zuccotti Park, a group of people and so on, and that phrase has become worldwide. And one of the most dangerous things that we are facing is economic inequity. Now this city, our city, which we are so proud of, which is the you know, art capital of the world, and I, um, I, I retired three years, so to give you an idea, when I came to New York back in the Cretaceous time, <laughs> yeah. when you wanted to take a workshop when, did you want, when you wanted to express yourself, when you wanted to discover, do I have talent? You come to New York. But how are you gonna train? Because you must train. Now we have, we have arrived at a place in our history as a country where the economic inequity is horrendous. This place allows people to, to come to a workshop that is affordable. And we must yeah. really, really emphasize that. Because we are depriving a generation of Americans and New Yorkers of the opportunity to even try to discover themselves as artists. And this is one place where you can look it up, find out about it, and not gasp. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> and come and have quality teachers, quality teaching. This is why I celebrate New Federal Theater. Thank you. We'll have one more speaker, and that is. Oh, oh Alice, Alice, come. <laughs> Saunders got me all fired up. <laughs> Yeah, I want to thanks Cassandra. Here's a little bit of what I wanted to say. I've been uh, I've been here a long time, Woody. It's what 15 years or so, and um, and before that, and I was introduced to this place really by Ruby D. Alcy Davis and and Billy Allen, who's just recently passed. Also, yes, and they were my uh, people that I'd worked with over the many years, working in film, television, theater. I've been teaching since 1962. I taught uh, at the HB studio for 15 years, and then I left there, and I went sort of independent, and I've coached all over the world. And so getting to the new Federal Theater, which I was doing a little in bits and pieces before I became a real instructor here, uh, was always a bit harder for me to do because of the location. <laughs> so for just like Cassandra, it was really hard and difficult, and uh, and maybe we didn't have as much uh, resources, uh, you know, that I could use as an acting teacher. But the biggest thing that it had was heart and imagination and a certain kind of passion and excitement. So no matter how many times I say I'm getting a little too old <laughs> to come down to Henry Street. I am never going to be able to leave this place. It, the, the students have been always a joy and wonderful, and Beethoven is here now. And over the years, I've gotten to work with them in different uh, places because, they're, because of their training, and uh, I would just never end uh, the acting workshops at the New Federal Theater. And they're affordable, and they are really opening up a vast well of talent and imagination that is otherwise um, you know, not seen. We're not, not, not able to go anywhere. So it's Woody King and the new Federal Theater, I think, that should last and last and last. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Oh, 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 oh. One more. Three or four people came in. Oh.
Yeah. Charles we, Turner, Arthur Prince came here? No, Arthur's been here. <laughs> Arthur's been here. Uh, Nathan George came in? Yeah, Nate. <laughs> uh, and we're going to hear from a playwright, uh, Joyce Sylvester, who also studied under Douglas Turner Ward. And Ed Woolens. Ed Woolens while she was here. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. Joy Sylvester. Um, I'm really honored to be here and to uh, just say a few words. First of all, you know, I adore Woody King uh, more than he even realizes, because we fuss a lot, <laughs> more than he even realizes. Uh, um, I've, I've come to the New Federal Theater as an actress. I've come to the New Federal Theater to study as a playwright. And um, I've come to... Uh, to work with Woody even as an associate producer. So he has allowed me so many um, wonderful, wonderful opportunities. Uh, just, I remember uh, one day we were at a, um, some gathering, might have been in here, uh, and Woody said, uh, Joyce, would you like to take one of the classes? I said, oh, I've already written a play. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, okay, so you've written a play, Joyce, <laughs> but you might want to take some classes. And I said, well, who's the teacher? He said, Douglas Turner Ward. And of course, I'm from, I'm an NEC alum, alumnus. And, uh, and I was like, Douglas Turner Ward is going to teach a class? Of course. And from then on, I was hooked um, in taking classes with the New Federal Theater and had the up opportunity to study with not only Douglas Turner Ward, which is, oh, gosh, such a wonderful opportunity. And um, I studied with Ed Bullens which was um, you know, an amazing uh, opportunity for me. Um, went on to even study with Steve Carter you know, at a, a, a Billy Holiday Theater and also um, Leslie Lee. And so you know, black theater in general has been um, an enormous blessing for me. Uh, and then also to come uh, to Woody and to uh, associate produce, which is an, another blessing, another aspect of this business uh, to to um, to grow and learn and to understand the patience that this man has, you know, in terms of trying to get these these uh, grants and and all the work that goes into getting a grant and 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 just watching him come in every single day and work so hard to keep this opportunity alive for so many black artists. I just, you know, thank you. And God bless you, because you're the one producer that we have that's in our corner. So I thank you. And I also studied with P.J. Gibson. I'm still coming, you know, P.J. Gibson and Cassandra Medley and, and just being a part of these classes. Uh, um, uh, Arthur French uh, read one of my plays. I had the opportunity to work with Patronia Paley in New Federal Theater um, in a Mary Baraka's play. And, you know, Elizabeth Van Dyke, you know, I've got to do a uh, reading Colored Girls that Woody directed. And it, I mean, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So, um, and also Pat, you know, who is uh, uh, Woody King's, you know, right hand, you know, the hard work that you put in. So when we don't get a grant, <laughs> when we don't, when we're not acknowledged, right. you know, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts a people that are out here really trying to make a difference in our culture. Thank you. Charles Turner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Charles Turner, and I'm a very proud member of the workshop, the wonderful workshop that uh, inspires us all. Maybe a couple, just look around and see some of these wonderful 
artist here. And, and it's a place for inspiration. In fact, uh, Woody's inspired me. Uh, we go back to Wayne State University. And he, was a, he was a pioneer there. He was creating and directing. And as an actor, I know him as an actor, so he's a very fine actor. But to come down here and uh, be part of this rotating team of artists is uh, a privilege, it's an honor, and it's an inspiration. Every time I walk through those doors, you know, and see the artists, the writers, and directors, and teachers, it inspires me, you know, to go forward, and, uh, and that's what we want this workshop to do, is to go forward because that's what Woody represents, going forward, being a pioneer. And, you know, to run with Woody is something special. <laughs> and uh, just look around, the students, uh, they, uh, they come away with something when they come down here. It's worth coming down to the Lower East Side because uh, Woody makes it the Higher East Side. Tell about you taught in the Bronx when we had a Bronx workshop. We had a Bronx workshop. We certainly did our grand concourse. And you were one of the Rod first, Rogers, that's right. You were one of the first teachers here. Yes, I was. Yeah, Woody called me back in early, I think it was the late 70s or something. Yeah, yeah. Came down here, we had a workshop down here, and they and that, that team of actors out of the workshop, they formed I mean, they, they didn't stop. They formed a a, a group called Ola. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that's what we encourage them to do, to go forward and and create and be, you know, it doesn't have to be Broadway. Go into your community, go into the churches, you know. Do your shows, do your one-person shows. You know, we, we try to encourage them to write, direct, and act, and be a part of the whole. Thank you, Woody. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you know, Petronia is here, Nathan George, and Arthur Frank. You can't let them get off, man, but I'm saying, because I know they'll say, no, 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 I don't want to say anything. Well, well, you just said Patronus, Patronus? Nathan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, so much has been said, and so eloquently, and so powerfully, and so emotionally, um, that it's very little that I can add other than to say that for it not to receive its due would be a blight on the city and what it is you people are doing. Not to cast aspersions, not to be negative, but this theater must be supported. Uh, as everybody has said, it has contributed so much to so many and it continues to do so. I have worked here as an instructor as an actor and even as a director. Woody gives people the opportunity to grow, to explore, to um, empower their acting. And for it not to be supported, I think, would be devastating for the city. For, for somehow that not to be honored and respected, the amount of time and love that he commits to the theater, um, to the black theater, to the theater of New York, it's just disgraceful. I, I, I don't, it's unfathomable how that could not be. And as I was coming down here, I didn't really anticipate having to say anything. Nobody said, you've got to get up and speak, so I didn't come prepared. And I asked Woody, I said, am I going to have to say something? And then when I was being passed over, I said, well, it's okay. Everybody spoke so beautifully, and I don't really need to say anything more. But the thing that asked, that I asked the question, if it has been excluded, if there's somehow there's, something is not being done, what do they need to do? And can you tell them if that is the case so they can do it? Because I know they will do it, and they have to do it, and they, you have to help them do it, and we have to help them do it so this can continue. Because it would be a disgrace for it not to continue when so, so many other things are being done. And always, always, always they get the money, they get the funding, and then somehow our people are left out in the cold. And it's just abominable. It's just a disgrace. But nevertheless, just recently, I was up there a couple of years ago, the same thing. Every time I go up there, I hear the same thing from these young black people. But when you come here, 
you're not excluded, you're not relegated to the, uh, to the sidelines. And that is what is so important. And as, some, as a couple of people have said, I can't believe that they charge as little as they charge. I mean, it's <laughs> unreal. I have my own acting studio. And I can't afford to do what he does. So a lot of people who could come to me would not, and not to pat myself on the back, but I will for a minute because I'm a really good acting teacher because I give 100% to whatever I do and I give as much as I can to my students. And some the people, a lot of the people come here, they can't afford to come to me, but they can come here. And they have the benefit of all these wonderful people who have worked and do work at all these prestigious places. They come down here and they can get the benefit of their knowledge. And this is what has to, has to be supported and has to continue. And I'm not going to rant and rave anymore. I've ranted and raved anymore. <laughs> but I, I too feel the passion that Joyce, and thank you for bringing, you know, everybody brought uh, eloquence, intelligence. Joyce gave us great passion, which we need that emotionality. And I really want to, if there's anything that I can do to help you in any way, support what they need to do, please let me know. And I'm sure everybody here would be willing to do the same thing because this institution must be allowed to continue. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, no, good day. <laughs> I had the uh, fortunate moment in my life to uh, meet Woody King right after the show came down. What struck me about this guy is that he was constantly smiling. <laughs> and I told Peter Deanne there was something wrong with this guy. He was watching. <laughs> And he was, he was a magnet, he drew people to him. And there's one thing I learned about Woody over the years is that when he says something, he means it. In this particular business, all throughout my life, I've met flakes all over the place. There's not one insincere fiber in this man. He's, he's solid as a rock. And I think he like sets a tone for everyone who works around him to meet that where he is. It's a standard that he sets that I don't see anywhere else in the theater. No ego, just straight to the point, not one ounce of you know what. Most of the actors in the theater haven't had a chance to really be around people who can train them on every level that could stretch and pull and twist and test them like they should in order to develop. This man provides that. This is why so many people out on the coast, they seem to miss the subtleties in the work. They seem to have a very foreign relationship with the subtext. But Woody doesn't allow that. And he thinks people, he's very sensitive in that regard. So the product, naturally, tends to go above and beyond what the mediocrity that we have to deal with every day. You cannot develop dramatically without the theater. Not in front of a camera, it has to be in the theater. Because you can take time then and deal with the, the, the very slight changes in the atmosphere to bring people to a awareness, to an awareness that they can't help but grow. You know, it becomes contagious. 
and uh, this man is responsible for that. All the times I've known Woody, I've never had an argument with him. I've never had any kind of a fight. <laughs> this is strange. <laughs> you know? And uh, except one time. <laughs> it got close. He asked me to direct the play. I'm not going to uh, mention people's names. You but, directed it? Did you direct it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But Woody had casted it. <laughs> no, man. No. <laughs> and he said two words. Tell him who it was. The face of Murkison. Denzel Washington. Okay. And uh, it worked. Wait, 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 wait. What two words is that? I missed that. You know, I came into New York uh, in the 60s, and I would hang around in St. Mark's and he was playing Newport News oh. in The Blacks. Okay. And then he says, uh, after that he says, I, I gotta tell this, Nathan. I I, 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 he says, oh man, I got this play, man. Him and Walter Jones be walking the streets, man, trying to get this play done. Called No Place to Be Somebody. Wow. Woody, it is great. So I joined the group and walking the street to get this play done based on his, this guy, right? He did it. Won every award in New York. Yeah. Please, please. 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 just do it. You can't just feel it, you know. It's not coming down from, you know, the person in green pastures <laughs> help you do it. So I think it's just urgent and uh, frightening to think that some place like New Federal Theater would not exist. I don't know what would happen if it didn't exist because of Woody and all the people here who have that dedication. So uh, I think it's almost criminal. There's something that could go on these many years. I can't, Woody's talking about how long ago we met. I remember, it's so long ago, I was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it must continue. 
whatever. Um, I meant to have this. Thank you. Okay. In closing it out, um, I really need uh, Elizabeth Van Dyke, a board, the board, our board members who are here. Now, Elizabeth Van Dyke, Kay Radke, and Valerie Graves, just to come up. And I want you all to see uh, uh, some of the board people behind the new Federal Theater who believes in what they're doing and tell you about Michael Denwitty, who had been a board member, Charles White, who had been a dedicated board member, and uh, people who support the new federal theater, Elizabeth Van Dyke, okay, Valerie Graves, and Kay Radke. How about you? Yeah. OK, now, I had to, when um, we sent out uh, this uh, message that we were going to be here today to do this. I got these RSVPs back. I think Valerie was the first. I'll be here. I said, wow, man. Who of those don't have to come down here to get in this? K. Radke. Right? I'll be there. Liz said, I'll be there. So, uh, I don't know if they want to say anything. I don't know if they want to just be acknowledged, but I know I'm acknowledging them, and I know uh, Liz knows everybody in the room. <laughs> and I think the other teachers and uh, people uh, should know Jonathan. Right now, I know you're going to send a big press release out on this. But these are the people who are behind the new federal theater. You know, and if you want to do some video interviews, do them first. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anybody want to say anything? Well, I just want to say that everybody's presentations are just wonderful, and I just can't wait to get back to a board meeting to tell the rest of the board because I think definitely this workshop should continue. It's so valuable, and it, it really needs support. And I'm just very grateful to be here and have heard all of you. Yeah, see how Janie said, look, Woody, can't you let the board know? What, what, what did you say? Can't we go to our board and let them know what's happening? Yeah. Even though I knew they knew what was happening, but to hear it, you know? Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, like Kay, I wanted to say what an honor it is to just be in the company of these people. But that's a feeling that I've had since Woody approached me about joining the board. I think that he uh, thought I could bring some marketing expertise because really my field is advertising um, as a creative director. I'm retired from that now and able to bring whatever I know to the board of New Federal Theater. And what that does is show me how difficult it is, how much more difficult than I even knew to get financial support for an organization like this one. Because if New Federal Theater can't be supported, then what can? Look at the people in this room. Think about the stories that you've heard of, of the momentous contributions to art that they've made and realize that New Federal Theater still struggles to make money. Um, when I describe this theater and who has been associated with it and who's come out of it, to people who talk to me about, you know, what is this, this theater that you're on the board of, they can't believe it. And I, in turn, can't believe that it's still in any way a struggle for a new federal theater to survive. I just want to say one more thing, which is that new federal theater is certainly, as someone earlier said, about diversity. Uh, but it's also about discovery. Just as Woody discovered playwrights and actors, he causes all of us to learn things about ourselves. Woody called me up to be, to be the producer of the 44th Gala of New Federal Theater. And I thought, why are you calling me? What is there about me that makes you think that I can do this? The reason I did accept the offer was because I was afraid to do it. <laughs> and Woody said to me, we must run toward fear. <laughs> um, and so I ran toward that fear. We had, I think, a very successful gala. And it showed me that uh, Woody is truly 
a fabulous producer and a discoverer of talent and people who may not even be aware that they have it. And this theater and his life's work must be supported, must be allowed to continue. Well, I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of the instructors for your years of dedication to your craft and for your willingness to come down here every week and share that craft with new generations and with those interested. I want to thank all the students for being willing to come down here and learn it and devote yourselves to being open. And we all share our love for theater, our love for black theater, our love for our culture, and I assure you that this board joins you and we do everything that we can to keep it going. It's meaningful and we're all in this together and just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm Andrea Luttrell, and I am a student of the Federal and just being here today, it's just been, I've been in awe of all of the, of the passion, the history, and all of Mr. King, and I mean, I hope to be able to contribute to the theater and to new students like myself, um, with institutions like these, and it would be such a workshop that not continue. Uh, I would love to continue as a with all of the incredible students. I mean, I met Alice Spivak on a bus, and she told me about New Federal. And even though I had done my research about New Federal, I just hadn't gotten around to it. But there was something about in the magic of talking to Alice about how much New Federal had done uh, for actors, black actors. This inspired me to come to the as an artist, and you're trying to get here, and you're trying to juggle all your auditions and meet people. Thank you, John. You want people to have a space where not only is it affordable, but you want to want a place where it's, people are passionate and people who are going to help you to grow as a person, as an artist, um, as a director, writer, uh, you know, as a performer, just in general. And you fit with that place. I mean, like I said, in all of all the talent and love that's here, and whatever we can do support the federal it should, it would just be a loss. Tell us, oh, I'm Jonathan Slav. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Angela Trotter. I'm a student here at yeah. the New Federal Theater. And I'm a new student. I've heard and known about the theater for years. I came here from Alabama. It's really festive in here, so I hope you can hear me. I came here from Alabama, and Woody is my home. We're both from Alabama, so we're developing this really fantastic relationship and just getting more uh, knowledgeable about what's happening with the theater. And let me just give it to you straight. I work with children outside of the theater, creating programs to keep them busy, keep them out of trouble. And part of that is music and the arts. So for me, I'm looking for a place where I can merge with someone to send these children after school, when they're out of school. So for the theater here, to quote Martin Luther King Jr., human salvation lies in the hands of the creatively maladjusted. The theater is necessary. It is absolutely necessary for me, for everything I'm doing, and for the children. So whatever needs to be done, whatever adjustments have to be made, I'm willing to do this for the theater. Fresh blood, new blood, new eyes, whatever is necessary, I'm here to do it. The theater has to, has to remain. Fine. Do me a favor. Uh, tell me and tell us your name again. Angela Trotter, T R O T T E R. I am a student here. I live in Harlem, and I make the trip here every single Monday, and I will do it for eight months. I look forward Where to do you my live? Mondays. I'm in Harlem. I look forward to my Monday nights, and I tell you this: of all the places I've studied in the city, I've never had. 
pieces I had to work on within a week. It stretched me beyond any limit I ever thought I could do. I need this. I need it. I saw Nathan George here at the speed up with Charles Turner. I've gotten so much. I went to a, um, on a SAG member, I went to uh, one of those workshops and David Picard with the Telsey Agency. We were talking after class. I told him what I was doing. I mentioned some of the instructors. He said, Angela, stick with the program. You have some of the best instructors we're going to get in the city. I just saw all of these people these that I mentioned on an audition. You said you're getting the best. You're learning from the absolute best. So stick with it. So we have to stick with it. The theater has to remain. Thank you very much. Thank you. So tell me your name again. Uh, my name is Beethoven. Hold on, Beethoven. What's your last name? O-D-E-N. I'm sorry I didn't hear because uh, it's... O-D-E-N. Okay. Beethoven, are you studying acting? Yeah. Are, are you only an actor? I'm only an actor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, T could you tell me about that story you told about when you uh, when you booked all those uh, all those jobs? I had started. Uh, I checked in with Woody, and I had got into. I signed up for the program. Actually, I, booked, I was going to sign up in the last. It was in 2014, but I booked the show, and then I came back and I started in January. And within a month's time, I booked a commercial. And I had studied, the first teacher was Petronia Paley, and we had worked on specifically, she was like, what do you want? Because it starts off with, what do you want? And how do you want to articulate what you want? You can get it. That's what goes into acting, you know what you want to do. So she set that to me, put that out into the world. And I literally achieved it. And it went from that month to booking commercial, booking a, uh, a Shakespeare show, booking another commercial by the end of November, and uh, booking a couple of other things, and simply from being in this class that I already had in this class. The foundation is the fine, the finessing with these master teachers that have really helped me out. Um, I think that without their the skill and their excellency that they have given me, truly beneficial to my, to my talent, to my craft of being a Shakespeare It was a Shakespeare show. It was a the Taming the Shrew. It was a, a visa commercial. It was a stage reading. It was the Harlem the Harlem Nine. No, it was the yes, the Harlem Nine. Uh, 40 hours in, uh, in Harlem, and it was a couple of other things that I kept on the wall, but it, it just, it was like seven things that I booked with the all of last year, which was tremendous to me, but, and from, from like commercials to like Shakespeare and to like uh, community stuff, it was like a wide variety of things because I knew I had the skill in order to get all of those, all those uh, jobs. And that's the important thing is with anything is that you have the skill set in order to get the job. And sometimes when you're going to a university or a uh, conservatory, like uh, Trony was saying, that as a person of color, uh, they are not working on things that you, that they deem um, beneficial to the program. However, when we get out into the world, that's not necessarily the, uh, how the real world works. Because you, as we know, we go into different things. We have the skill set of that particular Crap, which the new federal does. It allows you to have the skill set in order to work the job, to get the job, and to have a lasting career in the arts. Talk to people. Sure. Okay. What were you going to tell them? Yeah, one of the things that I failed to mention. Wait, first of all, tell us your name. Joyce Sylvester. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been produced six times, you know, at the Billy Holiday Theater and also Woody King was also uh, a producer of one of my plays, which was Grace and the Light. And um, I'm the recipient of the first August Wilson Adelco Award as well. So I've gotten two uh, Adelco Awards for Blessed Best Playwright and as well director. And um, some of the plays I actually started at the New Federal Theater Workshop with Ed Willens and Douglas Turner Ward, which is Grace in the Light and uh, Free to People, 
which I won the Best Director, as well as um, uh, uh, Faith, Faith Online, which won an Adelco Award. Yeah. And a Free Man's Hope won the first August Wilson um, Adelco Award. When was that? What, I'm sorry. What year was that? Oh, goodness, you're going to ask me. Yeah, I, I, think, um, I think it was 2005. I believe it was 2005. I can't remember exactly, but it was 2005. Yeah. So, you know, the New Federal Theater has afforded me such really great opportunities and encouraged me to continually study in those workshops. Thank you.